I will now discuss how to find the area of polar regions, that is, the regions bounded by polar curves. In the following figure, the polar region is bounded by the lines theta equals alpha, theta equals beta, and by the polar curve r equals f of theta, where f is a continuous function of theta over the closed interval alpha comma beta. Suppose also that the following inequalities hold for alpha and beta. That is, alpha is not larger than beta and that beta is not larger than alpha plus 2 pi. Notice that this polar region resembles a fan that can be partitioned into n wedges. So we can do that by using the rays theta equals theta sub 1, theta equals theta sub 2, and so on until theta equals theta sub n minus 1 for these values of theta between alpha and beta. So by partitioning this polar region into n wedges, we now have n central angles, which we denote by delta theta sub i for the ith wedge, and we now have n areas of the wedges, which we will call a sub 1, a sub 2, up to a sub n. And so, the area of the polar region is given by the sum of the areas of the wedges. So, the next question is, how do we now find the area of each wedge? So, you can do that by examining this ith wedge. Okay, as you can see, this wedge has central angle delta theta sub i and is bounded by the rays theta equals theta sub i minus 1 and theta equals theta sub i. Now, among the many values inside this interval, theta sub i minus 1 and theta sub i, let us choose one value and let's call that theta sub i star. Therefore, the ray from the pole up to this polar curve r equals f of theta along theta equals theta sub i star has now length f of theta sub i star. Now, how do we obtain the area of this ith wedge? So as we can see in this diagram, we can use the area of a sector to approximate the area of this wedge. Recall that the area of a sector in a circle of radius r is given by the area of sector equals one half times r squared times theta where r here is the radius of the circle and theta is the central angle of the sector. So for the ith wedge, okay, this part, you can use delta theta sub i for the central angle and f of theta sub i star for the radius r in this formula. Okay, and so, the area of the ith sector can be used to approximate the area of the ith wedge, which is a sub i. And so, the area of the polar region that is shaded in gray okay, is approximately equal okay, to the sum of the area sector. Okay, some of the areas of the sectors. So now that we have obtained an approximation for the area of the polar region, how do we now obtain the exact area? So observe over here that there are approximation errors. So what we want now is to reduce these errors. So to do that, we must make the wedges very, very narrow. Okay, that is, uh, we can make the width of the widest 
wedge to become very, very small or to approach zero. And so the exact area can be obtained by taking the limit of this summation or the limit of the summation of the areas of the sectors. So this limit summation is now the definite integral from alpha to beta of half the square of f of theta. To summarize, suppose we have the polar curve C defined by the equation R equals f of theta, where f is a continuous function on the interval alpha beta and that alpha and beta satisfy the following inequalities. Then, the area of the region enclosed or bounded by the polar curve C and the terminal sides of theta equals alpha and beta is given by half of the integral from alpha to beta of f of theta squared d theta, or the definite integral from alpha to beta of half the square of the radius r. So let us now use this formula to answer the following example. So in this example, we want to determine the area of the region in the first quadrant inside the cardioid r equals 1 minus cosine theta. So this cardioid is oriented to the left and is symmetric about the polar axis as you can see here in this figure. So we are only interested in the portion of the cardioid that is on the first quadrant, that is from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. And so the limits of integration is or are theta equals 0 and theta equals pi over 2. And so we have the following setup for the area integral. So here we have one half definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square of the cardioid, which is 1 minus cosine theta. So squaring this binomial, you will get 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. Okay. Now to integrate this, you can use the following formula for the double angle of cosine. So recall that cosine of, say, 2a is equal to 2 times cosine squared of a minus 1. Okay. So by using this formula, this expression becomes 3 halves minus 2 cosine theta plus 1 half cosine 2 theta. So this means cosine squared theta is replaced by 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Okay, so doing the integration, you will get the following expression. Okay, and by evaluating theta from 0 to pi over 2, you will get 3 pi over 8 minus 1. Okay, and so we say that the area of this portion of the cardioid in the first quadrant is 3 pi over 8 minus 1 square units. Let's now go to the next example. Here, we want to find the area of the region enclosed by the petals of the rows r equals 3 cosine 2 theta. So this rows has four petals and is symmetric about the polar axis and about the pi over 2 axis. So by symmetry, with respect to the polar and pi over 2 axis, we can just consider the area of half a petal and just multiply the result by 8. So here in this example, we will consider this half petal from 0 to pi over 4. Okay. So the half petal that we are interested is this portion of the rows. Okay. And so the area integral is given as follows. Okay. So A equals one half definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the square of 
the rows 3 cosine of 2 theta. So this expression is the area of this half petal. And let's just multiply this by 8 to obtain the area of the whole polar region. Okay, so times 8. Okay, so this becomes 4 times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 9 cosine squared of 2 theta. Okay, so you can again use here the double angle formula for cosine. So doing so, you will get 1 plus cosine 4 theta times 9 halves for the integrand. And then 8 times 1 half is 4, which is outside the definite integral. Now, let, uh, we can move 9 halves outside this definite integral. And so, you will get 18 times the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 1 plus cosine of 4 theta. So, integrating this, you will get theta plus 1 fourth sine of 4 theta. And then evaluating theta from 0 to pi over 4, you will get 9 pi over 2 square units. And so the area of the region enclosed by the petals of the rows is 9 pi over 2 square units. Now, if the polar region is bounded or enclosed by two polar curves and not by the two lines theta equals alpha and theta equals beta, then what can we say about the limits of integration of the area integral? So the answer to this is that in most cases, the points of intersection of the two polar curves help us determine the limits of the area integral, as we can see in the following example. So in this example, we have two polar curves, the cardioid R equals 4 plus 4 cosine theta, and the circle R equals 6. So the graph of these polar curves is as follows. So here we want the region inside the cardioid and is outside the circle R equals 6, or this shaded region in this figure. So as you can see, there are two points of intersection, one in the first quadrant and the other one is in the fourth quadrant. So to find these intersection points, you equate the expressions for the cardioid and the circle as follows. So this gives us cosine theta equals one half, where theta must be equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So pi over 3 corresponds to the point of intersection in the first quadrant, whereas 5 pi over 3 corresponds to the point of intersection in the fourth quadrant. And so the points of intersection are 6 comma pi over 3 and 6 comma 5 pi over 3. So to continue, we can again take advantage of the region symmetry about the polar axis and consider only the portion of the region above the polar axis, which is this portion. So the area integral is then given by the area integral for the cardioid from 0 to pi over 3 okay, minus the area integral of the circle from 0 to pi over 3 or as follows. And then let us just multiply this by 2 to obtain the area of the 
desired region. So combining the terms in one integral gives us the following expression. So you can again uh, use the double angle formula for cosine on this portion of the integrand. Okay? And doing the integration and solving this gives us 18 square root of 3 minus 4 pi square units. Okay? So the area of the region, of the shaded region, is 8 square root of 3 minus 4 pi square units. Okay, let me first erase. Okay. Now, in this example, we are interested in the area of the region inside both the circle and the limason. So their graph is given by this figure. So note that there are three points of, uh, two points of intersection, one in the first quadrant and the other one is in the second quadrant. And again, since these polar curves are symmetric about the pi over 2 axis, then we can use this uh, symmetry of the region to simplify our computations. So here, we can consider the portion of the region in the first quadrant. Okay, so for the points of intersection, let us again equate the expressions for R as follows. So 5 sine theta, which is the equation of the circle, equals 2 plus sine theta, which is the expression for the limason. Solving for sine theta, you will get 1 half, where theta must be equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And so the points of intersection are pi, uh, 5 over 2 comma pi over 6, which is this point. And 5 over 2, 5 pi over 6, which is this point of intersection. Okay. So by symmetry about the pi over 2 axis, we can write the area integral as follows. Okay, so this... Area integral is the portion of the circle from 0 to pi over 6. Okay, so this is pi over 6. Okay, portion of the circle from 0 to pi over 6. Okay. Then add to it the area of the limason from pi over 6 to pi over 2. So this one. Okay. So portion of the limason from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay. And just multiply this by 2 to, to obtain the area of the shaded region. Some remarks on intersection of polar curves. So far, you obtained the intersection points of two polar curves by equating the expressions for R. But doing so does not guarantee us to produce all the intersection points because of the many ways of representing a point in polar coordinates, such as in the following example. So here we have two cardioids, one that is oriented to the left, given by R equals cosine theta, and one that is oriented to the right, given by R equals 1 plus cosine theta. So to obtain these intersection points, we equate the two expressions for R, giving us cosine theta equals 0 or 
theta must be an odd multiple of pi over 2. So this solution gives us the two intersection points in red, a 1 comma pi over 2 and 1 comma 3 pi over 2. So observe that the pole has clearly been missed out. So why is this? So, so this is because the cardioids pass through the pole at different values of theta. So observe that when theta is zero, the cardioid is at the pole for this equation of the cardioid. Okay. And for the cardioid facing to the right, the value of r is equal to two. On the other hand, when theta equals pi, this cardioid is equal to 2, while the other one is at the pole. So in general, it would help us if we know the graphs of the polar curves and see where they intersect. So keeping this in mind, let us now go to the last example of this lecture. So in this example, we want to find the points of intersection of the four petal rows C1 and the unit circle C2. So we can see from the graph that they intersect at eight points. So equating the two expressions for R, we will get sine two theta equals one half or two theta equals the following values. So finally, we have theta equals pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12. And so these values of theta correspond to the following points. So we have 1 comma pi over 12 and 1 comma 5 pi over 12 in the first quadrant. And the last two points... 1 comma 13 pi over 12 and 1 comma 17 pi over 12 in the third quadrant. So these are the four points in red in the following figure. So now how do we obtain the other four points that are given in blue? So as I've mentioned earlier, points in the polar plane can be represented in many ways. So therefore, the circle R equals 1 can also be represented by r equals negative 1. And so, equating 2 sine 2 theta to negative 1 gives us sine 2 theta equals negative 1 half or theta equals the following values, 7 pi over 12 and 11 pi over 12 in the second quadrant and 19 pi over 12 and 23 pi over 12 in the fourth quadrant. Okay? And so, the intersection points are as follows. Okay, so note that the first coordinate is negative. So, for example, in the point negative 1, 7 pi over 12, this point can be found in the fourth quadrant instead of in the second quadrant. So, same with negative 1, 11 pi over 12. Meanwhile, these two points, okay, so instead of finding them in the second quad uh, in the fourth quadrant we can find them in the second quadrant so now we have obtained all the eight intersection points of the four petal row c1 and the unit circle c2 so this ends the discussion on finding the area of polar regions thanks for watching